so the manufacture of discrete parts or assemblies using a continuous process are called as mass production in case of continuous production the production facilities will be arranged as per the sequence of production operations in this continuous production we should understand that whatever raw materials go into the making of the product that cannot match with the final product hello everyone i am purnima faculty in the department of commerce and management vidyashram first grade college temple of excellence mysore i welcome you all to this session in the session 5 of unit 1 we will be having a discussion on what is mass production so in the previous classes we were having a discussion on the various types of production systems in this the next type of production system is mass production so the manufacture of discrete parts or assemblies using a continuous process are called as mass production so this is nothing but a manufacture of discrete parts or assemblies if the company is manufacturing spare parts or assemblies for a bigger manufacturing unit then such is produced in mass production so it is justified by a very large volume of production so there will be a very huge volume of production in case of mass production and the machines are arranged in a line or a product layout product and process standardization exists and all outputs follow the same path so in case of mass production all the machinery will be arranged in a product layout and the products and processes are standardized so whatever will be produced in mass production it will be always in standardized ration and the output will be also be standardized what are the characteristics of mass production first one is standardization of product and process sequence so they will be using standard methods of the product and the process then dedicated special purpose machines having higher production capacities and output rates so in case of mass production the machinery will be of a very high capacity because the output also will be very high and as a result of which so we will have higher production capacity and higher output rates so the output also will be in huge volume then the third and the most important is the large volume of products the volume of products manufactured under mass ma production will be very high then shorter cycle time of production here whatever will be produced it will be produced within a very short period then lower in process inventory so the process which undergoes here in usually in mass production it will be a very short process and perfectly balanced production lines so the production lines whatever is having it will be all in perfect balance then the flow of materials components and parts is continuous and without any backtracking so whatever raw material you will be using for production that will be a continuous flow there will be no stoppage of the raw materials here anywhere and the components and parts so whatever components and parts are needed so everything will be introduced into the system and it will be continuous without any blockages here then production planning and control is easy so here in case of mass production we should understand that the production planning and control is very easy here because you know exactly what you will be manufacturing and it will be my keep on manufacturing on a very large scale then material handling can be completely automatic since you will be using the same raw material for a very large volume of products so the material handling will be usually completely computerized so you can make use of the machinery for material handling and there is no human element here next let us understand what are the advantages of mass production there is a higher rate of production with reduced cycle time 
So, the time taken between the conversion of raw material into a finished product is very short in case of mass production, higher capacity utilization due to line balancing. So, they will be utilizing the machinery for the fullest capacity so that they will be balanced because one spare part will be in manufacturing in one machinery, the other one in the other machinery. So, they have to be a balance between the two, for example, the nut and the bolt. So, both have to be balanced, so that, that is why we need to have a higher capacity utilization. Then less skilled operators are required. The persons who are operating on the machineries, they don't need any uh, skills, particular skills here. Then low process inventory. The process inventory will be very low here and manufacturing cost per unit is low. So whatever is the manufacturing cost, so that will be very low because we will have economies of large scale operation. So when you are undergoing mass production, the cost per unit of each of this will be very low. Next, what are the limitations of mass production? The breakdown of one machine will stop an entire production line. Suppose there is any one breakdown in the, any one of the machinery, then the entire production will come to a standstill. Then line layout needs major change with the changes in the product design. So whenever there is a change in the product design, the line layout has to be changed. Then high investment in production facilities. So there will be a very high investment in production facilities because the machinery used will be very big. The raw materials also used will be in a huge volume as a result of which they will have to, there will be very high investment. The cycle time is determined by the slowest operation. So what is the product cycle time? Product cycle time is the time duration within which the raw material gets converted into a finished product and the cycle time is determined by the lowest operation. So what is the lowest operation here? So that will be taken as the cycle time. The next aspect of the production system. So this is the fourth one. The fourth production system is the continuous production. Continuous production. So what is this continuous production? The production facilities are arranged as per the sequence of production operations from the first operation to the finished product. So in case of continuous production, the production facilities will be arranged as per the sequence of production operations. So we will know, suppose there is a, for any product, the raw material has to undergo three processes. Then from process one, process two, process three. So the raw materials have to move in the same sequential order. So the raw materials will move from the go down to process one, where the first machinery will be there and then process two and process three. And the materials will have to follow the same route here. So from the first process to the last process, we can see that there will be a change in the product. So we will be giving it a form utility and the raw materials as such, it would have converted into a finished product. The items are made to flow through the sequence of operations through material handling devices such as conveyors, transfer devices, etc. So whatever materials will be there, which, which, which will be used by the machines, so they will be made to flow through the sequence of operations. So what is the scheme of operation? The scheme of operation will have to be followed by the materials and as such they will be using the conveyors. Conveyors means so it will be a rotating uh, uh, where the materials will be moving on a, a table like uh, platform where it will be moving from one machine to another and the transfer devices. So all this will be automated and there will be no human element involved at all. So this is continuous production. Next, what are the characteristics of continuous production? So we have a dedicated plant and equipment 
with zero flexibility. So, whatever is the uh, object of production, whatever is the product which will be producing, the same thing will be produced. So, there will be no flexibility at all. So, you have to produce the same object again and again. Then, the material handling is fully automated. So, in case of continuous production, we should, we should understand that the material handling is fully automated. So, there will be a computer involved and as such, no human element is involved here. Then, the process follows a predetermined sequence of operations. So, in continuous production, there will be a, as the name itself suggests, the process, the production will be continuous without any breaks and as a result of which, the process follows a predetermined sequence of operations. So, the sequence of operations will be predetermined and the flow of materials will follow the predetermined operations. Then, component materials cannot be readily identified with the final product. So, in this continuous production, we should understand that whatever raw materials go into the making of the product, that cannot match with the final product. The final product will be something different, whereas what goes into the raw material will be something different. For example, you take the example of the production of sugar. So, we will be introducing the sugar cane into the machinery and the machinery will extract all the sugar cane juice and that juice is processed in, and it is made into sugar. So, we cannot compare what the raw material is and what the finished product is. So, such type of production is here in continuous production. Then planning and scheduling is a routine action. So, in case of this continuous production, planning and scheduling will, uh, will always be a routine action. There will be nothing different. The same thing over and over, it will be repeated. Then next, advantages of continuous production, standardization of product and process sequence. So, there will be a standardized process of sequence to be followed. Then higher rate of production with reduced cycle time. The product cycle that is conversion of the raw material into the finished product will be very low and there will be a high rate of production, higher capacity utilization due to line balancing. So, they will be making use of higher capacity, Util they will be utilizing the capacity of the plant to a very high extent. Then. Manpower is not required for material handling as it is completely automatic. So, similar to ma mass production, here material handling will be fully automated as a result of which we don't need any manpower here. Then, person with limited skills can be used on the production line. So, we don't need any skilled engineer to operate all these machines. So, person with a limited knowledge of the machinery can be made use of to operate these machines and unit cost is lower due to high volume of production. So, when the volume of production is very high, the cost will get distributed over the so many number of units as a result of which the unit cost will be lower. Then, next is what are the limitations of continuous production? Now, flexibility to accommodate and process number of products. Now, in this continuous production, we should understand that there is flexibility to accommodate and process number of products. So, if the product is, uh, if the, we can introduce more and more newer products into the same machinery as these machinery are very, very flexible. Then, very high investment for setting flow lines. So, it will require a lot of a heavy investment for setting up the flow lines. Then, product differentiation is limited. So, in case of continuous production, the product differentiation is limited. So, there will be a limited number of products which will be produced here as a re result of which the product differentiation is limited. Then, benefits of production management. So, what we can also have the benefits of production management here along with this the responsibility of the production manager etc. With this we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.